Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. In this tutorial, I'll explain how to manage your flight logs, crew, aircraft, and documents in Drone Pilot Canada. And along the way, show you a few tricks you might not otherwise know about. Let's get into it. Honestly, Drone Pilot Canada is pretty self-explanatory and intuitive for managing these bits of data but I'll show you some interesting tips along the way. So let's get started with flight logs. Go to the hamburger menu, tap flight logs. You're shown a list of your flights with the most recent at the top. This list will include both flights you recorded in real time, the normal way, and flight records you recorded manually. You can record flights manually from the dot menu on the main map. For each flight, You'll see the date, the pilot, the aircraft you used, and the street address of the flight. In addition, if you have created user-definable fields for flight logs, the first of these will be displayed right on this flight list. In my case, I have a user field called battery, and here it is. I'll show you how to create and manage user fields in a few minutes. One of the most frequent questions I get is, how do I delete flight logs? So I'll cover that right now. On Android, all you do is you do a long press on the flight record that you want to delete and either say yes or cancel. On iOS devices, you swipe left on the record and again, either tap delete or tap elsewhere to cancel. A couple of other cool things you can do from this list. If you tap on the dot menu, you can choose to view all of your flights on a map like this and you can use these little sliders to narrow down a date range if you wish. And when you're happy with the date range, you can tap on a marker to see the flight record. Or you can, back here on the menu, you can select flights that you wanna see and view them on the map. Or you can view flights on a calendar where the green dates are dates that you flew. Tap on the dot menu from here to go back to your list or the map view. You have lots of options for viewing your flights. You can also export your selected flight logs in CSV, comma separated value format, directly from this menu. The idea here is that you might wanna perform a flight for your company, say, and immediately send them the flight log. If you want to export all your flight logs in one big dump, you can also do that, but you do it from the data management menu. Now, when you tap on one of the logs from either the list, the map, or the calendar view, you can of course just look at the data or you can change it. To edit an item, just tap on the field, make your change, and that's it. When you return to your flight log list, the changes will be saved and they're saved automatically. Weather data can be viewed, but you can't edit it. You can always make weather comments or notes in your flight notes if you wish. Location data can be changed by entering a new street address and the latitude longitude will be calculated for you by the app. By the way, did you know that you can change the lat long format from GPS format to degrees, minutes, seconds just by tapping on the field? Pretty cool, eh? When you tap on the checklist button and you had selected save checklists with flight log when you did the flight, the checklists you had used will have a little tick mark beside them. You can update your checklist records if you desire, even if you had not saved them from your flight, from your actual flight, like when you actually did it. Let's talk about user fields. User fields are basically custom fields that you can define for flight logs or crew aircraft or even aircraft maintenance records. Tap user fields in the top right of any flight log. By default, the list of user fields is empty. Tap the plus sign to add a user field. Choose the desired data type for that field, numbers, text, or even a date field. Then type in the name of the field, like filter type. You can have as many user fields as you like. The one at the top of the user field list will be shown on your flight log list. 
If you tap Manage, you can change the order of the user fields, rename them, or even delete them. Now, be careful. If you delete a user field, all the data for all records for that field will be lost. So be careful. Well, I, I can't believe there's so much to talk about just for flight logs. I thought this was going to be like a two minute video. Well, let's, let's move on to the crew menu then. Again, the list here shows all the crew members that you have defined with their basic information and the first user field, if you've defined any. Pilots are denoted with their fancy hat beside their name. You can delete crew members that you're tired of, just like flight logs, a long press on Android or a left swipe on iOS. If you tap on a crew member, you can edit their data just again by tapping and typing. The app will allow only crew members that have been designated as pilots to be identified as pilots during a flight. So be sure to select that option when appropriate. And again, you can define user fields if you wish. Same as flight logs. It's pretty easy. The other cool thing about crew members is that you can load PDF documents directly into their records. This is a fantastic way to store your pilot certificate. And yes, Transport Canada allows you to have a soft copy of your certificate with you. It doesn't need to be a paper copy. You can also store recency documentation or any other PDF file you wish. There's a couple of ways to load documents into the app, and I've got a whole video about that. So, so have a look at that if you need to. There's a link up there. The key thing is to send the PDF to yourself as an attachment on an email. When you tap on the attachment of the email, select Drone Pilot Canada as the app to process the attachment. Then follow the instructions to associate the document to the right type, crew, like crew or, or aircraft, and in the case of crew member, to the right crew member. It's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. You can also load documents through the browser team portal on www.dronepilotcanada.com. And by the way, there's a user guide document available from that site as well. Aircraft. Again, pretty easy and intuitive, but there are a couple of interesting tricks in this area as well. First of all, when you set up a new drone, look for your drone's manufacturer and model on the lists. I try to keep this up to date with the latest and greatest, but if you don't see your particular drone, just drop me a line to dondroneson at gmail.com and I'll just add it in. The advantage of choosing your drone from the list is that we automatically link to the drone's instruction manual. Down here, you can see that there's a web link, and if you want, you can actually download the manual directly to your phone. Either a web link or a downloaded copy is sufficient to meet the rather strange requirement of Transport Canada that you have a copy of that manual with you at all times. If you have a DJI drone in your aircraft list, this will automatically activate the map view toggle for seeing the DJI geo zones on the map. And if you identify one of your drones as being sub 250 grams, the sub 250 gram map view toggle will also be activated. Otherwise, we don't clutter the screen with toggles and stuff that you don't need. Let's see what else is there. Oh yeah, you can load your drone registration document in with your drone records, another Transport Canada requirement. And if you tap maintenance, you can enter maintenance records like this. To create a new record, tap new and fill in the fields. Now, personally, I find it actually really handy to note when I've upgraded my firmware but you can also keep track of anything else you do to keep your drone in top flying condition. Our last topic is documents. You can of course view documents directly from the crew or aircraft records, but we also have a document entry on the hamburger menu itself. This menu item gives you one centralized spot to review any and all documents you've loaded into the app. It's kind of handy. And we also give you a link to the video explaining how to do it, just in case you've forgotten. Well, that ended up being a bit longer than I had intended, but I think you'll agree there was a lot of ground to cover. And maybe you've picked up a few tips along the way. Drone Pilot Canada, built by Canadians for Canadian drone pilots. 
Thanks for watching. Safe and happy flying.